A few months ago, I shared this Fertility TV episode called Seven Fertility Killers, and you all loved it. You always ask me what you should be doing, but what about what you shouldn't be doing to try to improve and increase your AMH? In this video, I'll share a few easy things you need to stop doing today because they are not helping you and your egg reserve. If you're excited about this, then please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you like this topic. And more importantly, why don't you chime in and let me know what your AMH levels are. And I want you to subscribe so that I know that you like this topic and I can do more videos like this. It's not going to be the basics like just quit smoking, drink some water, get some extra sleep and rest. You already know all of that by now, especially if you've been watching other episodes of Fertility TV. We're going to go deep into this concept and I'm gonna cover these five topics of things that you need to be avoiding. If you know you have low egg reserve, and you are serious about improving your AMH and overall fertility, and having a baby is something that you really want, then I highly encourage you to click on the link in the description below this video to apply to qualify to join my program, and more importantly, to speak to a real person on my team to see how we can best support you on your fertility journey. Now, let's get started. So as we get started on this topic about AMH and the five things that you need to stop doing to improve your AMH, I do want to remind you all that AMH is not a predictor of your fertility and how or when you may become pregnant. Its main value is really in setting proper expectations on the outcomes of an IVF cycle or to assist your reproductive endocrinologist or fertility clinic in determining the best protocol and plan for medications for an IVF cycle. So it doesn't mean that there's not value in having your AMH tested and in the information that it can give you, but I don't want you to put all of your fertility weight and burden in this one number. It's just one piece of the overall fertility puzzle that we need to address for you. Okay, so number one, avoiding the sun. Most of us have been taught that as good as the sun is, we need to avoid a lot of sun exposure on a regular basis because it can damage our skin, maybe cause skin cancer and so forth. I'm not here to argue about those points. What I do want to state is that first and foremost, getting sun exposure is extremely valuable and important. And the number one thing that its value has is that it provides natural vitamin D. We also know that there is a correlation between vitamin D levels and AMH levels, specifically that when we have lower AMH, we tend to also find that we have lower vitamin D. And so we want to improve that and increase your vitamin D levels to help support an increase and get accurate, healthy AMH levels. Now, it doesn't mean that if we absolutely increase your vitamin D that we will absolutely increase your AMH. That can happen and hopefully does, but it does not always happen. So what I would encourage all of you to do is to enjoy the sun. Now, if you know that you're gonna be spending eight hours in the sun, then yes, we do need to take precautions, make sure we're covered, we've got a hat, maybe some sunscreen. But if you're just going to be out on a regular basis, then I would encourage you not to use sunscreen and to expose your skin as much as possible. One of the guides that I like to give for natural vitamin D support is to go out in the middle of the day in the sun between 11 and two for about 20 minutes or so, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less on a regular basis with as much skin exposure as possible. So the best would be totally nude if you are in a private backyard and don't have any worries around. Otherwise, get into a bikini or a bathing suit and get out in the sun and expose your skin so that you can increase those vitamin D levels and also increase hopefully your AMH levels. So stop avoiding the sun is number one. Number two, stop using pesticides in your yard. That's right, we need to get away from using Roundup because it is toxic. It causes harm to your body, your fertility, and your endocrine system. These chemicals are fertility killers and endocrine disruptors, and that is definitely something we do not want when we are trying to preserve our egg reserve or ovarian reserve and preserve egg quality, we need to avoid chemicals and pesticides and toxins. And the number one 
chemical and toxin that I find used everywhere and often, unfortunately, find when we do testing inside of our bodies is Roundup and pesticides. So you all need to stop using that in your yard. Now, if you can control it, there's lots of natural things that you can do to address that. Vinegar is one of the best ones to address weeds. The other way is just pull them out. You know, get some exercise and get some uh, hard work by yanking those uh, weeds out of the ground, but also you can use some vinegar. So that is the best way to avoid it if you own your house and your yard and that is something that you can control. If you rent and you don't have control over it, then we want to avoid exposure or constant exposure to that. So you wanna ask if they are spraying, if there's something else maybe that they can use instead, and if they are, you wanna know what the schedule is so that you can stay away or avoid contact and breathing the air when that is happening. By the way, those things are also used in your food as regular pesticides in the produce that we get, which is also why the quality of the food that you get is so important and making sure that it's organic because that will at least, maybe not always totally avoid, but at least reduce and eliminate as much as possible that piece of the puzzle. So that is number two. Number three might sound funny, but it is absolutely true. Stop adding more things to your to-do list. Your goal is to reduce the burden on your daily life, on your adrenal glands, right? On your nervous system. So the only way to do that is to do less, not to do more. It's important here that I wanna encourage all of you to say no more frequently. When people ask you to do something, if it doesn't work for you, if it doesn't fit into what you really need to be doing, then I want you to avoid that. Stop trying to pack into your schedule all of these plans, whether social or otherwise, try to eliminate so you have more downtime to rest, recover, and rejuvenate. Give your body and your nervous system some time to recover and to just settle down. So number three is don't add more to your to-do list. Eliminate more. This will allow your ovaries to function more optimally, to do what they're meant to do instead of being in this constant fight or flight response because we're always trying to do, 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 do instead of rest, 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 rest. That is number three. Number four is all about your drinking water and this is about avoiding bad drinking water. I know that sounds simple and you might say, but what does that really mean? Well, here are the two main things that we need to take into account when we are talking about drinking water. One is filtration, and two is the source, like how are we consuming it from where did that water live? So we wanna make sure that the water you drink is as clean as possible, filled with as little to no chemicals or toxins. So we wanna make sure that we have a good filtration system at your faucet so that you can be getting healthy drinking water. Even better would be a great filtration system for your whole house to filter all the water that comes in, whether it's going into your body or on your body. So that would be the first part of this. And the second part is often we are drinking water that comes out of plastic. Where it's coming out of the pipes and then we're putting it into plastic. We want to avoid that as well because that causes other problems. We've been talking about chemicals and toxins a lot in this video, and this is no different, right? Whether it's actually in the water before you filter it, or it lives in this plastic where you're then getting some sort of BP, whether it's BPA or other BP, then the bisphenol is not something that we want and does cause all sorts of problems to our endocrine system and our fertility. Again, also endocrine disruptor. So we want to make sure that we are drinking out of glass bottles, right? or, and I've got my other one here, stainless steel as well. Whether it's a stainless steel glass like this or cup, or a stainless steel or glass bottle that we are gonna pour that into. Now, I know some of you have reached out to me and said, well, I have to buy in plastic for whatever reason, there's nothing else I can do. Well, then we wanna get it out of that as quickly as possible. And I would encourage you to look for other options that might allow you to get away from buying plastic altogether. And there are those options as well. So, number four is about drinking water and what you're going to do to make sure you're getting good quality drinking water. I want to thank the sponsor of this week's video, Fairhaven Health, the maker of quality fertility supplements. Okay, number five, stop using tampons. Actually, what this should really say is stop using conventional tampons because conventional tampons and, and actually most tampons and pads are made from cotton. Well, 
Cotton is a natural resource that is farmed. And like we talked about previously with our own house, when we are trying to get rid of weeds and so forth, we use pesticides. Well, the same is true on cotton farms. They use tons of pesticides, and in this case, Roundup. And cotton has been found to have a ton of glyphosate, which is the main ingredient in Roundup. And so we want to avoid that, whether we are consuming it orally or you are using it vaginally. And the reason why this is also important is because your mucous membrane in the vagina is extremely permeable. So when you put this tampon and insert it into the vagina, it's gonna get easily into the bloodstream. And so then you're putting these toxins directly into the vagina where actually it's very close contact to the uterus, right? And right into the bloodstream, which is exactly what we don't want because you are getting these chemicals directly where we don't want them and they're easily and highly absorbable. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. So the first rule of thumb that I recommend here is get rid of the tampons and use pads. Now sometimes tampons are still necessary, but whether you're using tampons or pads, I highly recommend that you use organic tampons or pads because the cotton is not sprayed and the likelihood of having glyphosate in there decreases dramatically in that situation. Now, there are other reasons why we might find uh, conventional tampons to be dangerous or harmful for us and cause problems to the endocrine system. So dioxins are one of them. They're, they're dangerous and there's a byproduct of bleaching. We also have odor neutralizers in those products and dyes potentially. We already talked about the pesticides and then fragrances as well that we might not want in there as well. So the best thing that we can do is try to get organic tampons or pads. And I highly recommend getting the ones without the applicator. I know it might be more challenging and something that you're not used to, but that's what you're looking for. And on top of that, also chlorine free pads. So that's my guide and why that's so important. So number five is avoiding using conventional, the keyword, conventional tampons. So what are you gonna start to stop or change now from the five that I just mentioned that I want you to avoid or stop? If you do have some fertility questions, you can also leave those below and I will do the best I can to answer them. If you wanna go deep into your fertility and you wanna find the root cause to what's not letting you get pregnant, then I wanna ask you to fill out the application using the link below to join my Hope Fertility Coaching Program. This will allow you to speak to a real person on my team and see how we can best support you on your fertility journey. And again, all you have to do is use the link in the description below. I also wanna leave you with a video that I shared before about how to improve your egg quality in just three months. If you haven't already checked it out, you can do so by using the link in the description below as well. Until the next video, Stay fertile.